Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here with some breaking news. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the recent sightings of the new moon. Now, on June the 20th, I woke up in the midst of my day of remembrance celebration, as many of you were, especially ones who followed this channel. But after blowing my shofar, I got a report from one of the viewers that there was a sighting of the new moon on June the 18th instead of June the 19th. Now, this is not new. We've had a couple of these early sightings. Even as far back as Atonement Day in 2022, did we see people that were giving early reports. But we were able to disprove those early reports and stay on track. The thing about this particular sighting from Phoenix, Arizona, where there was two people who saw the moon, and there was one person who sighted the moon on the 18th in Angwin, California. And it should be noted that Santa Clarita, California reported no sighting. But anyway, those are three sightings of the new moon on June the 18th, when all of us was expecting to see it no earlier than June the 19th. Now, I'm showing you the rest of the reports and you can see here that no one else reported in for the 18th, which was the case back months ago when we had the reporting. Then I was able to actually disprove using the scripture those early sightings. But I tell you guys now, that's the reason why I wanted to make this video is I cannot scripturally disprove this July the 18th sighting which if you think about it is a really big deal because that means that the fourth month has not started yet and we are actually still in spring, which means that we have a month of spring left. So let's go over here and let's look at Enoch to verify if it was possible that these guys did see the new moon on June the 18th. Now, I'm coming to this Bible app I use. If you guys don't know about this one, I would check it out because it not only has the King James Bible, but it also has the Apocryphal books and it has the hidden books, which is what we're going to use today. We're going to go to First Enoch and we're going to drop down to about chapter 71, where it starts off talking about the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. Well, we're going to be looking in chapter 72 as we look down to start hearing about this new moon. Now, we plan on talking about this more in future videos. And there is a translation that makes this more clear than this Lawrence translation that we're using. But I'm having to record this on my phone. So I'm going to go ahead and use this verse now. But the Charles translation or the Shard translation the Shah translation is a little bit more clear. But anyway, we're going to drop down here to about verse 7. Um, the previous verses was giving us general information about the sun. Oh, looks like the Rock Out Bar put out a new song. We might have to go check that out. But anyway, looking down here at verse 7 is when it starts describing the new moon. It says, and when the sun rises, the moon rises with it, receiving one portion of its light. And on that night, when it commences its period, previous to the day of the month, the moon sets with the sun. Now, so we're getting into the nitty gritty of how the new moon works. And we could use this information, particularly when we are unable to see the sun. Like I was not able to verify the new moon because of the clouds on the 19th and the 20th. And so we can only use this information to go back and see if it was possible that the new moon was seen on that day. All we have to do is look to see if these particular characteristics were present on that day. So what it's saying is that on the day that the new moon will be seen, it says the sun and the moon will rise together. And you see back up in verse six that it's saying that on the previous day, the sun and the moon will set together. So on the 30th morning, 
what this is saying, like I said, the other translation is more clear. I just don't have it handy right now. But what it's saying is on the day before the new moon will be sighted, we see here in verse 6 that the sun and the moon will set together. And then the morning that the new moon will be sighted, the sun and the moon will rise together. And then on the evening when we will have the visualization of the moon, the sun and the moon will no longer set together. There will be some difference between the time that the sun sets and the moon sets, giving us space in order to see the new moon. So being unable to verify the sighting of a new moon, this was what I went to thinking that I was going to be able to disprove that sighting. But turns out this is not the case. Matter of fact, let's go over and look at this at timeanddate.com. Matter of fact, since I'm using this phone, let me find maybe a quicker one. Let's look over at National Weather Services, where they have this sun and moon table for 2023. So we're going to look down at June the 19th for the sun information. And we see that the sun rose at 0500 hours, 0507 matter of fact, and it set at 2024 hours, which is 824 p.m. And as you can see, that's the case for the 18th, the 19th, and the 20th. So let's go look at the moon data and look for the characteristics that we saw over there in Enoch as far as the 18th. And what you see is that the moon rose with the sun on the 18th. The sun was 504 and the moon is rising at 501 on the 18th, which is what Enoch said. You see that there in verse 7. And when the sun rises, the moon rises with it, receiving a half a portion of its light. But look back up the previous verse, talking about the day before. It says that the moon and the sun will set together. You see that in verse 6. Well, when we come back over to this table, looking at the sun data for the 17th, the sun went down at 2023. And on the 17th, the moon went down at 2027. So the sun and the moon set together on the previous day, which was the 17th. And then on the 18th, they rose together. So let's see what else Enoch says about it. Down here in verse 8, it's kind of jumping back to like what we heard up there in verse 6. It's saying the night previous to its period, the day before, in other words, the moon sets with the sun. That's the, what we saw up there in verse 6. We've already talked about that. And then in verse 9, when it's talking about the actual sighting of the new moon, you see that it says that the moon will actually receive one seventh portion of its light. So on the 17th, it's supposed to set together. On the 18th, it's supposed to rise together. And then on the evening on, of the 18th, it's supposed to receive one seventh portion of its light. Well, when we come back over to weather.com, we see all of those requirements was met with the exception of the one seventh portion of its light. Let me show you what I mean over here. I can come to this app that we use and go back to the 18th. Sunset was about 7 p.m. on the 17th. And what do you know? At sunset, it had 7% of its light. Guys, this is a big deal because of the way our sacred calendar works. Many of you know that the gate in which the sun and the moon converge in order to start summer doesn't start until about June the 20th. So this new moon being sighted on June the 18th is too early for the fourth month. In other words, we are still in spring. We still have another month of spring to go if this be the case. And up here in West Virginia, and these mountains is pretty cold. I need my jacket on now. This could very well be the case that we are not in summer yet. And that's why I'm making this video, guys. This is extremely important. So if you would, y'all help me out. If you have any additional information about the sighting or any of this, let's get together, put our heads together, because it's really important that we get this right. I mean, most of us carried out our day of remembrance celebrations, blowing trumpets and resetting our calendars and all of that. So we really haven't missed anything. But if we don't get this right, we could actually miss it for next month. So if you would, let's collaborate down in the comment section if, so that we can get some of this stuff worked out and look for some future videos. Because like we said, this is extremely important. And so we plan on covering it more as we get more information. In the meantime, y'all pray for us as we're on our road trip traveling towards D.C. 
If you have any video suggestions or anything we could do while we're in D.C. or anything like that, you can let us know. But like we said, the main thing is to pray for us as we're on our travels. And we really appreciate it. And Shalom.